I can't, I don't know how to settle that, sorry. That's okay. Well, every time you go small, they disappear. I'm totally ready now. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our November monthly meeting. I uh, can't believe it is almost the end of the year. This is our last monthly meeting for the 2021 year. Um, really excited to, to have uh, the Arc of Northern Virginia with us today. Um, before we get started, just a couple quick announcements. Um, first of all, with Thanksgiving next week, I just wanna let everyone know that our office is going to be closed on both Thursday and Friday for the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, and our connection support group that typically meets next Thursday will be canceled for the holiday. Um, it, for updates on our schedules around the holiday, please check our calendar on our website. That's gonna be the most up-to-date information with all of our support groups and classes. Um, and to look out on social media as well as our calendar and email for our holiday schedule in December when that comes out as well. Um, with that, I'm actually just going to turn it right over to our presenters so we can get started. We have a great presentation today. I'm so excited to introduce Tia Marsili, and I'm going to let her go ahead and get started. Good evening, everyone. And thank you so much, Megan, for inviting the Ark of Northern Virginia to present this evening. I'm going to go through the first few slides a little more quickly than usual since we're on a short timeline here. Next slide, Karen. So we're talking about special needs trusts this evening, as you can see. Um, we have a real quick poll. So while I'm talking, feel free to let us know in the chat where you're from and if you have a trust with the Ark of Northern Virginia. And if not, would you like to, or if you're in the process with us? And then moving forward, any questions you may have, add them to the chat and then be sure to remain muted throughout the presentation. So where are you from? And do you have a trust with us? Next slide. That's a picture of me. Next slide. I'm the director of trust at the Arc of Northern Virginia. The Arc is a national organization that was started over 70 years ago to promote and protect the human rights of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities and actively support their full inclusion and participation in the community throughout their lifetimes. So we're a nonprofit organization. Our trust program is a, built on the foundation of the nonprofit organization, uh, the ARC, and we follow the mission statement through within the trust program. We extend the promotion and protection of human rights of people to people with all disabilities and actively supporting their full inclusion. And if you look at the logo in the top right, special needs trust, we serve the Commonwealth of Virginia the state of Maryland and Washington, DC. So primarily those are the three places where our clients are. So it's a big area. Um, we do have clients outside the, the, um, the local region too. There are we're a local chapter of the largest nonprofit for people with IDD and we receive funding through some direct services we provide and uh, grants, fundraisers, contributions, et cetera. Next slide. Our trust program has over 20 years experience. So it was established in 1999, again, to serve Virginia, Maryland, and DC. Our documents were written by attorneys, one of whom we work with very closely still. And the second of them, we work with some, but not as closely as the first who's been our pro bono legal counsel for those 20 years. And we're the world's largest community-based organization of and for people with IDD. And we're celebrating our 60th anniversary on March 21st, 2022. Next slide. So you can tell we've been around a long time. I've been at the ARC for, I mean, my 16th year. This is some of the trust team staff. We've almost doubled. Those are the two people I work with primarily at Key Bank, who is our trustee. We actually work with about 10 people from KeyBank, and that's the foundation board at the bottom. They oversee the trust program. Next slide. So today we're gonna to talk about special needs trusts, how our program works, the disbursement process, and our fees. Next slide. 
the questions we'll be answering. How can I leave money for my child? And the child, when I say child, just think adult child. So it's any age, right? Newborn to 120. So how can I leave money for my child without jeopardizing benefits? Why is it important to move the money into a special needs trust? How does an SNT or SNIT or special needs trust work? How does one disperse from an SNT? And why is our program unique? Next slide. So what is a special needs trust? It's a legal vehicle that provides benefit to and protects the assets of a person with disabilities and still allows that person to qualify for and receive government benefits. So it protects the, any assets that you wanna leave your child or assets that they may come into that need to be protected so that they can either maintain their benefits and or have their money managed by someone else. Next slide. Who's eligible? Anyone with a physical, mental, and or developmental disability as defined by the Social Security Act. So this is straight off the SSA, Social Security Administration's website. So physical, mental, health, or developmental disability. Next slide. So why do people establish a trust? The number one reason is to protect government benefits, meaning uh, means-tested benefits. If somebody has SSI or Medicaid or subsidized housing, you want to make sure you protect those. Or SNAP, right? Food stamps or energy assistance or um, some transportation services are they look at how much, how many, what the means are of the individual, how much money, how much assets or resources do they have. The second reason is to help with money management and long-term financial planning. N knowing like I can't leave $300,000 to my, I have two daughters with disabilities. I couldn't leave 300,000 to either of them because I wouldn't um, feel comfortable doing that. I wouldn't trust that they would know how to manage their money and I would not want somebody else stepping in and, and spending it for them. And so establishing a special needs trust, that's the second um, reason. And the last reason, and all of these are pretty much on an equal plane, right, is to promote the dignity, comfort, and happiness of the person with disabilities. So if you have means-tested benefits, you may have enough for room and board, and um, you have your health care. But there's, not a, there's no money left over for those better things in life. And the funds in a special needs trust are meant to supplement government benefits not supplant them, not be in place of them, but to supplement. So whatever the government isn't paying for, the special needs trust could, as long as it's legal and legitimate. And we'll talk more about that. Next slide. Here's a short video. Families of people with disabilities often use trusts to set aside money for the future. A trust is a special legal arrangement that puts a trusted person, a trustee, in charge of managing money for someone else, a beneficiary. A beneficiary can be anyone who has a hard time handling money themselves. In a special needs trust, the beneficiary is someone with a disability. Here's how the process usually works. In most trusts, a grantor, usually a family member, sets aside money property, investments, or other assets for the beneficiary. The grantor chooses a trustee to manage the assets for the benefit of the beneficiary. The beneficiary has no direct control over the assets and can't spend them. That's the role of the trustee. The beneficiary's needs and desires are taken into account, but the trustee has the final say over how the money is spent. And that's what makes a special needs trust so valuable. Somebody that is on means-based public benefits can only have $2,000 or less in assets. If they have more than $2,000 in assets, they're gonna be bumped off of those public benefits and that's not a good thing. Even though the beneficiary doesn't control the assets in a special needs trust, day-to-day, month-to-month spending decisions by the trustee can affect benefits if they violate any of the rules, laws, and policies that apply to benefits. That is where the Ark of Northern Virginia can play a crucial role the greatest strengths of the Ark of Northern Virginia is their experience and their expertise in the special needs arena. 
they're not going to make a mistake in a distribution and bump somebody off of public benefits. The rules in special needs area change constantly and somebody that is not familiar enough with the special needs arena is not going to be able to keep up to date on those rules. And that's one reason why more than a thousand families have decided to entrust those tasks to the ARC of Northern Virginia and our partner, Key Bank. In our trusts, we divide the responsibilities of a trustee in two, adding the role of manager to the mix. ARC team members are experts on day-to-day -day trust spending decisions. Key Bank's team are experts at managing and growing the money in a trust. Adding the ARC team as manager makes everyone's role easier and adds another level of confidence to the future of the beneficiary with special needs. There are a lot of things trust money can be used for, but there are things it can't be used for. Having experts at the ARC overseeing spending decisions takes a big burden off the family of a beneficiary. It was very overwhelming to me to realize that I needed to all of a sudden learn about um, Medicaid, Social Security, Special Needs Trust. Who had even heard of that? It is impossible to think of all the future needs of your family member. And this offers a sense of security for those who support that family member. The Ark of Northern Virginia Special Needs Trust team works closely with Key Bank staff to make sure the planning, setup, funding, and operation of every trust runs smoothly. We'd love to talk to you about setting up a trust for you or a loved one with a disability. We serve people in Virginia, Maryland, Washington, D.C., and areas beyond. Our trust program is open to people with any disability. Here's how to get in touch. Thank you, Karen. So that video is on our website if you'd like to view it again. So who's who uh, whenever you're establishing a special needs trust? <coughs> Excuse me. So let me just step back and say there are three places where you can establish a special needs trust with an, an authorized nonprofit like the Ark of Northern Virginia, with an elder law attorney specializing in special needs if you're from Virginia, um, an attorney in Maryland or D.C. And nobody's told me where they're from. So if you want to shout it out in the chat, let me know. I'm not seeing it. Um, or a financial institution. So we'll start on the right with the attorney or financial institution. So generally the parents, let's, let's say we're talking about a family funded trust, a trust where you wanna leave money for the benefit of your adult child with disabilities. Then often the parents are parent or co-trustees or the trustee, and then you have to name what are called successor trustees, who's going to take over whenever you die. If you establish it with a bank, sometimes the parents and the bank are trustee, co-trustees together. And then when the parents die, the bank takes over unless the family has named a successor trustee. So there's a lot of responsibility placed on the family in managing and administering the special needs trust if you use an attorney or a financial institution. There may be a grantor or not. It depends on how the trust is written and if the trustee is different from the person funding the trust. There's always a beneficiary. That's the person with disabilities. They're benefiting from the trust. Some trusts being written by attorneys now will have the terminology trust advocate, which is very similar to what we call a primary representative. So they have input in matters of the trust. They may also have some decision-making power, but it's a limited authority. And then in the attorney or financial institution, whenever there's a trust there, there's going to be remaindermen. That's who inherits whenever the beneficiary dies. So who receives the remainder of what's in the trust when the beneficiary dies? At the Ark of Northern Virginia, we collaborate with Key Bank and Key Private Bank. So Key Bank, they're out of Cleveland, Ohio and Albany, New York. So we work with people in both of those offices. And the Ark of Northern Virginia is the manager. So we oversee the day-to-day -day client relations. So you almost never talk with the trustee unless you're inter interested in speaking about um, investments or maybe have some tax questions or um, you'd like KeyBank to be your executor of your will 
or if you have a revocable trust and you want them to be the successor trustee on a revocable trust with you, which is not the same as being a trustee with the Ark of Northern Virginia. The grantors are the people establishing the trust. So it is two different things in our scenario, right? Key Bank is the trustee. They have the fiduciary responsibility. So any trustee is responsible for asset management, asset allocation, account reporting, tax reporting, check writing, and dispersing. And when it's a special needs trust, that person has to have additional knowledge on the means-tested benefits and disability systems. And so, like I said, in that situation, that's where the Ark of Northern Virginia steps in. The grantors establish the trust. The beneficiary is the person with disabilities. The primary representatives become our main point of contact when the grantors are deceased. Could be the person with disabilities as well, if they're not under guardianship. It could be family members, friends, anyone that you want to have um, the ability to speak with us about the trust, help the beneficiary, make disbursements out of there, um, look at the investment options and things like that. We always also ask on our trust who has legal authority. Is there a power of attorney, an advanced medical directive, a representative payee under social security? We need to know who's who in the life of the beneficiary. And of course, the remaindermen. So who will inherit many moons from now when the beneficiary dies? And the grantors determine that on a family funded trust. Who's going to inherit? Next slide. So there are two types of trusts: the third party trust and first party trusts. Third party trusts are usually established by parents, relatives, friends, and those may be funded. That means you may contribute money to them now or unfunded. You don't wanna contribute money until you die or any time in between. You can establish those privately with an attorney or a bank or go to a nonprofit like the Ark of Northern Virginia. Again, remember we serve the entire Commonwealth of Virginia, the state of Maryland and DC. So you don't have to be local to have a trust with us. And the first party trust, those are funded. That's when it's the individual's money. So a lump sum payback from social security, a survivor benefit payment, um, child support over 18, winning the lottery, alimony, a structured settlement, a jury decision that leaves money to the person. That's when a first party trust comes into play, right? That's when unexpected money comes to the individual with disabilities and it needs to be moved out of their name. You can establish that either through an attorney or a bank or through a, an authorized nonprofit. And that's when it's called a pooled trust. So that means that the money's pooled for investment purposes, but everybody has their own individual account reporting and their own individual spending based on what's in their trust. Next slide. So third party trusts, what we call family funded because the family's usually the ones funding it. You can see it's established by the parents, relatives, or friends. And then look in the next to the right, how to fund it. Most people fund it through an inheritance, meaning in, in my last will and testament, I say when I die, 50% goes to Sheridan's trust, the proper name of it, right? The Ark of Northern Virginia, personal support, family funded trust for the benefit of, and the other 50% goes to her sister's special needs trust. Again, it's named specifically. You can fund it with an insurance policy, life insurance policy, transfer from another trust, contributions, real property. Basically, it may be funded with anything except the beneficiary's money. And that's the big thing, right? That's the big diff. One of the two big differences. Whose money is it? We ask that question. When you say, I'm ready to set up a trust, we'll say, whose money's going into the trust? That's important because you never want to commingle your money with the beneficiary's money. In order to establish a trust, if you wanted to establish it with the Ark of Northern Virginia, you would contact us directly. We'd schedule the appointments. We have all the documents. We complete the documents with you. We meet with you to make sure everything's correct. We send you the documents. We use DocuSign. So the whole process stays within the Ark of Northern Virginia and you. And there's a one-time enrollment fee, and we'll get to that at the end. You can also go to an attorney to establish the trust or to a bank. Most people fund it second to die. So maybe there's a second to die life insurance policy. That means when both parents are deceased, 
the life insurance funds go into it, or maybe in the last will and testament. But you may fund it at any given time. You can put seed money in it, $300 to start the trust up just to get the tax ID number and have it functioning and rolling and whatnot. So the other big difference when it comes to the two types of trust is what happens to the funds at the death of the beneficiary. So again, because this is a family funded trust, the grantor decides who will inherit, right? It was family money. And so the grantor gets to decide who's going to inherit. In my situation, each of my daughters, so whoever dies first, the money from their trust will go into their sister's trust, okay? And then Karen, next slide. Thank you, please. My screen froze. Next slide, Karen. Thanks. The other type of special needs trust is a first party trust or what we call self-funded. So it's the individual's money funding it. And it's established, the statute says, and Karen, those black bars are popping up on my slide again both at the top, now the middle one's gone, but there's one at the bottom. Who establishes it? It's either established by the individual with disabilities, parent, grandparent, guardian with a capital G, court ordered, or an agent under power of attorney. So that's federal statute limits who may establish the trust. And if you look to the other column, how to fund it, an unexpected inheritance. That means like Uncle Joe in Montana dies and leaves $25,000 to Bobby. Well, Bobby can't have $25,000 because either he'll spend it or he'll lose his benefits or both. So that's an unexpected inheritance. Now you can could have told Uncle Joe, hey, if you're leaving something to Bobby, leave it to the special needs trust with the Ark of Northern Virginia. And they could have put that in their documents and it would have been okay. But if it goes straight to the person with disabilities, um, then it's, it would need to be moved. It could be a lump sum payback from Social Security Administration, a jury decision. It could be income, adult child support, military survivor benefit program, alimony, the lottery. I think it's military survivor benefit plan. Um, it's basically, it's the beneficiary's money. And that's what's the difference between the, the two, right? It is either family money or not family money. The process is the same, contact the Ark of Northern Virginia or go to an attorney or a bank, anything under a million dollars, the bank's gonna send you to an attorney unless they know about the Ark and they'll tell you to look at the Ark. An attorney will send you to us if it's under like $150,000. They don't under, many attorneys don't understand yet that we can also manage bigger trusts. And we have trusts that have $25 in them and we have trusts that have millions in them. So it, we can handle any dollar amount. You'll only establish the first part of your self-funded trust if it's necessary, right? That's if a person with disabilities has benefits they wanna protect or needs to apply for benefits or they simply can't manage their money and the family's concerned and so they want to, and the individual may be concerned too, and they wanna make sure that there's somebody there that's going to oversee and help the beneficiary with their spending and help them budget their money. Now here's the second big difference. What happens to funds at the death of the beneficiary? Well, on the first party trust, there's something called a Medicaid payback. And that's because Medicaid says, look, I'm gonna allow you to have all that money and you're gonna be able to set it aside in a first party trust and we're not gonna count it, says Medicaid. But when you die, and if you've used Medicaid health insurance, then there's a bill. And so when you die, you have to decide before that, you actually have to decide when you're establishing the trust, do you wanna leave that money to Medicaid or do you wanna leave it to the Ark of Northern Virginia as a charitable contribution? That's pretty much what it comes down to. <laughs> you can say Medicaid payback and to the heirs of the estate of the beneficiary, but generally speaking, I'd say in 95% of the cases, Medicaid takes what's remaining in the trust when the beneficiary dies. Next slide. What's our partnership with Key Bank? 
on the left, that's what we do. We provide services for people with disabilities. We understand current benefits and eligibility requirements. We follow the grantor's wishes, so the person establishing the trust, and consider the beneficiary needs, beneficiaries' needs and priorities. And on a first party trust, that can be the grantor and the beneficiary could be one and the same, right? If you remember, it said the beneficiary may establish the first party trust. We're in a unique position in that we're a nonprofit first with a foundation to advocate for the human rights of people with disabilities. We weren't just established to manage trusts, but we have a holistic approach to the life of a person. We have a progressive fee schedule for accounts over a million. And on the right, key bank is the trustee. And the first five things are what every trustee needs to do, asset allocation and management. So decide, key bank decides with the grantor, how will the money be invested? And then key bank manages that. They also prepare the account reporting and the tax reporting. They write the checks, they disperse the funds, they transfer them, however the money's getting out of the trust and into the hands of the service provider or the person with disabilities, whatever's being set up. The grantor, if they're eventually going to be funding it with more than $250,000, may customize their investments. That means they can have a conversation with our financial advisor at KeyBank on how to invest the money. Otherwise, there's eight mutual funds from which to choose. Our trust holds real property. We're the only nonprofit in the region, in the greater, like on the North Coast, even that holds maybe in the whole country that actually will hold property, real estate and real property. That includes property for the beneficiary to live in, but also rental properties, also oil, mineral rights. And then in-kind transfers of stock are also possible. So that means you have your money invested with Vanguard and when you die, you wanna make sure those same investment options are in place in the trust, then Vanguard representative and Key Bank would talk to one another and get all the paperwork figured out. You can have that conversation sooner than later. Next slide. Another video for you. From shoelaces to vacation travel, from buying a car to buying a stapler, the Funds and Special Needs Trust fill gaps that government benefits don't cover. And keeping those benefits requires not spending trust funds on what the benefits do cover. Knowing what to buy and what not to buy is just part of handling a special needs trust. A trustee's job is managing a trust to benefit a person with a disability. That comes with a lot of responsibilities and can be a lot of work. You end up as, uh, in, as individuals doing this with all kinds of needs for money management and accounting and all kinds of things, which puts a pretty heavy burden on whoever becomes the trustee. But there is an alternative. The Ark of North Virginia offers an approach that divides the duties of a trustee in two between two sets of experts. Our special needs trust team serves as manager and our partner Key Bank takes on the role of trustee. As trust manager, we work with beneficiaries and their families to set up trusts, make budgets, and review day-to-day -day spending decisions. As trustee, Key Bank focuses on safeguarding and growing the money in a trust. We work closely with Key Bank so every payment is done right and recorded properly. We were such novices, we really didn't know what we were doing. The kind of services that the ARC was willing to provide were very important to me because they would keep Nicholas safe and always provide him with what he needed. I won't always have the ability to know the intricate details of the social security requirements that are constantly changing or the Virginia laws that have, make no sense and I could never keep up with, but that's something they are keeping up with. In our role as trust manager, we take a proactive, hands-on approach. We review every trust spending decision. We listen to our beneficiaries with disabilities. We take their needs and desires into account. We ensure spending is in line with rules, policies, and budget. We help make connections to resources and professionals in the community. The ARC knows what the rules are with respect to special needs planning. They, uh, they can keep that person on public benefits. They're aware of what other public benefits are out there and available for this person. And they're always gonna be an advocate. We make the trust process easier because we patiently guide everyone through trust setup and ongoing management. Simpler, 
because we've developed an efficient process that reduces the number of steps you need to follow, and safer, because we keep up to date on rules regarding trust payments and government benefits. So instead of booting him out of the services where we waited so long to get them now, he is safe. And that's the point, that my son is safe. Our special needs trust team helps plan and maintain budgets. That's the key to making sure trust funds last as long as possible and are used as wisely as possible. We account for all the things a beneficiary needs. We look at all sources of income, not just trust money, to be sure money coming in is in line with money going out. We focus on meeting the needs of our special needs trust clients every day. We are a nonprofit committed to the lives and fulfillment of people with disabilities. Our unique approach has attracted an ever-growing number of families since we began the program in 1999. Confidence is key. Having a trust uh, through the Arc of Northern Virginia gave me so much confidence and peace of mind that if something happened with me and my husband, uh, our son Jesse will have a life, will have future, and will have people who will take care of him. We'd love to talk to you about setting up a trust for you or a loved one with a disability. We serve people in Virginia, Maryland, Washington, D.C., and areas beyond. Our trust program is open to people with any disability. Here's how to get in touch. Thank you, Karen. <clears throat> so that too is on our website, uh, thearcofnovatrust.org. So looking at this slide, this talks about how we support our special needs trust clients. So as part of the process, we work and educate with and plan with the family, as well as the individual. We prepare the trust paperwork. So you do not have to go to an attorney to have the trust paperwork drawn up. We do that. And we also facilitate the trust plan preparation, which is the letter of intent. For pre-funding, KeyBank is the trustee reviews and approves the trust documents. They troubleshoot special situations. This in particular has been coming up with housing and with IRAs. And then they help to ensure compliance because they're responsible for needing to, um, or they follow regulations of the any bank regulation organizations, I'm drawing blanks on them, as well as um, the property management regulations that are in place. And then once the trust is funded, we have a process in place to review and process client disbursements, ensure that each disbursement aligns with the grantor's priority and the beneficiary's needs. We maintain up-to-date documents and trust plans with um, in collaboration with the beneficiaries and the grantors, because if we need something, we need to reach out to you and ask for it. And then we also, if you want us to, we can coordinate with case managers and other stakeholders who support the beneficiary. <clears throat> and Key Bank, once the trust is funded, they process the disbursements. Once, we, once we've sent the, to the, send the disbursement request to them, which we do five days a week, they also distribute the statements. Now there's an online option and conduct reviews of the trusts, and they're responsible for the tax reporting, account reporting, investing with your input, and managing the real estate or real or any real property. Next slide. Today we've established over 1,900 trusts. So since 1999, we've established over 1,900 trusts. The Key Bank manages over $53 million in trust assets. And we've been able to lower the trust fees three times in the last two, two plus years because of the growth of the program. We've been improving lives since 1999 and we serve families primarily in Virginia, Maryland and Washington, DC. So we're experienced, we're empathetic and we have the expertise required to administer special needs trusts. Next slide. So the disbursement process, this is a question that all, we always get asked, how do I get money out of the trust? So <clears throat> we have a simple disbursement request form or a and I should say, and there's also a recurring disbursement request form. So the beneficiary, the primary representative, someone completes that form. If they need help, we're there to help them complete it. 
It's very simple. It's the name of the beneficiary, the account number, which we have on file if you forget it. The, um, let's just say it's ABC Mattress Store, 123 Main Street, Vienna, Virginia. Uh, and you went in and looked at mattresses and picked one and the invoice, they did what's called a training invoice. And it says it's gonna cost $1,232.15 with tax to take out the old mattress and bring in the new one and lay out the, you know, and the cost for the new mattress. And the primary representative signs it. And actually in that scenario, we'd probably send the check to the beneficiary or someone else to walk the check into the store. Um, but you can also order online, of course. The recurring disbursement request form is for um, basically bill pay, rent or utilities or car insurance or transportation or um, reloading a debit card that the individual can have. $50 a week, $200 a month, whatever the amount. We always need to have that supporting documentation, receipts, invoices, bills, training invoices. That's because the regulations state that. They want to be able to see if Medicaid or housing, if HUD or Arlington Grant comes back to us or Social Security Administration, if there's SSI, if they come to us and ask to see the bills, invoices or whatnot, we need to be able to provide them. So it's much easier for us to get them at the very beginning than to try to get them from you, you know, a year later if Social Security comes in and asks for an account report, right? And it also helps us to verify that whatever's being purchased or has been purchased is for the benefit of the individual with disabilities. Those documents get sent to us, either US Postal Service, FAX, FedEx, UPS, um, USPS, if I haven't said that, email, text messages, there's a variety of, you know, any way possible. Um, what we don't have yet is an app. So if anybody out there is an app developer, we'd love that. So when we get those documents every day, five days a week, unless there's a holiday, so every business day, the trust account people verify all aspects. Is it for the benefit of the person with disabilities? Does it jeopardize benefits? Does it follow the grantor's wishes? Is it legal? Is it legitimate? Is it within their budget that we've helped create for them? Is a primary representative signing it? So there's a, is, there are a lot of questions that get answered before it comes to me. And then the Ark of Northern Virginia has what's called sole discretion. So we either approve. So I either approve the request and the majority get approved because everybody's, well, most people understand the process. I disapprove it because it's not for the benefit of the individual or it's extremely expensive and the, the trust can't afford it or um, it just doesn't make sense. Or pending, okay, yeah, we can, um, let's have a conversation about why you wanna buy all that archery equipment. I'm not quite sure I understand. And then we get on the phone or Zoom or whatever and have a conversation. Oh, because you teach archery and you're a member of the National Archery Association for People with Disabilities. Oh, and you're a member of a club. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. So that justification helps us to, to understand in some more extraordinary situations why the request has been made in the first place. Next slide. So that gets sent to Key Bank and then they, um, send out the money in whatever format it's being sent out. So what are the fees? There's a one-time enrollment fee to establish the trust with the Ark of Northern Virginia. That's $1,050, 1050. So that's for the appointments. That's for us preparing the paperwork. That's for the follow-up um, questions that you may have and that we may have. So that's just one-time enrollment fee. And that's paid by check, credit card, and we're setting up the ability for ACH transfers. So where you can either push money from your account to ours, or we can pull money from yours so we could debit your account. The, if this person or a sibling needs a trust as well, we offer a half price, buy one, get one half off. We feel that since we're already working with the family, the individual with disabilities, then we can offer that second trust at half price. If the trust is unfunded, so you've established the trust, let's say you establish it today on November 15th, and one year from today's date, there's no money in the trust and you don't plan on putting money in anytime soon. 
then we would invoice you for what we call an annual maintenance fee of $65. And every year thereafter on the anniversary, we'd invoice you for $65 and, and hope you'd send us the check or transfer the money or use the credit card. Or once the, and I should say, and or when the trust is funded, so we have a minimum fee of $300, that's a minimum seed money, like you're planting a seed then instead of $65 a year, it's 1.49% of the corpus of the trust. And that fee sh should be going down. I keep saying this, I don't have the official paper yet, but it should be going down a, a little bit uh, based on what we've heard recently. But the annual, so it's a combined management fee for the ARC and for Key Bank, 1.49%. So if somebody puts in $300 as seed money in the trust, they're paying about $4.48 a year instead of the $65 annual maintenance fee. Are we making money on that? No, but neither do we have to invoice you for the $65 and sometimes follow up and then process the check that gets sent and whatnot. It's all then just automatically deducted from the trust. And you don't have to worry about sending the check. You get a tax ID number, our participant number, an account number. You have all those numbers in place, but that's completely up to you. It's not required. And then the only other fee we charge for administrative purposes is the $250 closeout fee. And that's when the individual dies or the trust is about to be depleted. We'll send out an email around the $1,000 mark and say, there's a thousand in the trust. What do you intend to do? You know, add more money, deplete the trust and close it, or nothing. So that's always helpful for us to know as well. Okay, so that was everything um, in a nutshell, pretty fast there. So I'm going to ask, I think the next slide may be in sum. We're in a unique position and that we're a nonprofit that advocates for the human rights of people with disabilities. And we take a holistic approach to the individual. It's not just about the trust funds, but about their benefits, about their relationships, about what they're doing in their lives, and are they happy and safe and taken care of. We're experts on current disability regulations. There's minimal family responsibility. So the family members can be primary representatives. They can make requests out of the trust and knowing that they can't get money just because they ask for it. Remember, we have that process of checks and balances in place before something's approved, although it happens five days a week. Um, so a person can be very involved or only involved on occasion. And that's, that's really nice for siblings in particular. Um, the fees are low. They're, they're competitive as well. You may fund it with seed money, $300 or more. Key Bank is responsible for the account and tax reporting. So they, they send the documents to the IRS or to you or to both, depending on the scenario. There are multiple investment options, including customized investments when over $250,000. We can hold real property and handle in-kind transfers of stocks, bonds, treasury bills, and any commonly traded assets. Next slide questions. So I tried putting my picture back up on the screen, but my video is not working anymore. I don't know what happened. Um, and now I can't start it at all. So I'm not going to mess with that. So you can't see my smiling face anymore. But if you have questions, put them in the chat, please. And Megan is here to help uh, manage any chat questions that come up. And Megan, I don't see anything in the chat. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Awesome. Well, first of all, I just want to say a huge thank you to you for that information. That was very comprehensive, very helpful. And I know I, I'm not very familiar with trust. So that was a lot of great information for me to learn for sure. Um, looking at sort of the, the YouTube live chat, I know somebody did ask sort of a clarifying question. When you say... The Ark of Northern Virginia covers Virginia, do you mean the entire state of Virginia or is it specifically Northern Virginia? The entire Commonwealth of Virginia. Awesome. Yep, the entire state of Maryland and the District of Columbia. That's our primary region. Like I said, we do have trusts in other places, New York, Colorado, Florida, um, New Jersey. I can't remember where else, but yeah, but all of, all of Virginia. Awesome. 
Um, I'm going to give it a minute, see if any of our attendees ask another question in the chat. Just a reminder, the chat's on the right side of the YouTube uh, video. You can comment any questions in there if you have them. Um, Tia's here as a resource to answer your questions. And I know that was a lot of awesome information too, so people might be taking it all in <laughs> as well. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of a crash course when an hour with, with an hour presentation on uh, December. Well, I'm not, I don't want to say that because I don't think we're holding the December third Friday in December special needs trust presentation. That's way too close to the holidays and vacation time. But on the every other month, we on an even month, we do the two hour presentation. And at the Karen, can you jump to the contact slide, please? On the arc of Nova trust.org. You can, there it is at the bottom there, the archivenovatrust.org, you can go there and we have videos and we also have a YouTube, um, I forget what it's called now, YouTube platform where all the videos are as well. So it covers social security benefits, it covers aging, you know, parents aging and what we need to be doing with ourselves and our finances to make sure we're covered. Um, the intersection between military and federal government benefits, meaning when the parents have worked both places, how they need to be thinking about their assets. Um, we offer Trust Talk Tuesdays, so twice a month. Again, at our website there, you can register for the event and it is a, an open forum. It's held in a meeting format on Zoom. And so people, I do a little mini presentation on trusts and people all get an opportunity to introduce themselves briefly. And then everybody has a chance to ask any question they want, whether it's social security or housing or trust or whatever. Um, first Fridays, every Friday of the month, unless there's a holiday on the Monday, and then it's the second Friday. Is that again, a variety of topics. And then Ashley and I, that's not Ashley though, that's Allie, but Ashley and I both do one free, with either one of us, one free 50 minute consultation so we usually recommend people join a Trust Talk Tuesday and maybe watch the videos and then focus on what questions they'd like to ask us. And then we um, have that consultation and answer any questions, whether or not you want the trust with us or not. What we want is to make sure that you have a one-stop shop where you can talk to people who can talk to you about all the benefits. You know, have you, so you have a child with a mental health diagnosis, have you applied for supplemental security income for them? Are they eligible for that? Do you have documentation on their disability that could help get, get the social security extended to, to piggyback on your social security? Um, do you, what about housing? Have you looked at housing? Do you have services through a program provider? So we're there to, to help with all of those things uh, within the trust department and answer those questions. Fantastic, yeah, that's, it's a fantastic resource. We're really, really grateful to have you here presenting about this. And I, I know um, we have a lot of people in our community that, that would benefit from this. So just to those watching, this is a recorded presentation. And if somebody wasn't able to join us, they can come back and check out our, our YouTube video. But as Tia mentioned, there's also a lot of great resources right through the Arc of Northern Virginia. You can check out one of their longer presentations for more information and, and we can send some of that out in our new, next newsletter. Um, but also I did put the, the website, the arcofnovatrust.org into the chat for anyone um, who wants to check that out now. Um, I'm going to do one last call if anybody else has any questions. Um, I know, again, lots of great information that we got today. Um, and we can, and so you know, everybody that's hearing this and we'll hear it later, there are people from NAMI, both your local NAMI group and in Prince William County and in Charlottesville. Those are the three regions that we're working with the most closely with right now. We'd love to reach out into other um, regions in Virginia as well as Maryland and D.C., but if you need to speak to somebody else who has the, is the parent of an adult child with disabilities that have trust with us, let us know. I can tell you that the majority of our trust clients are people with a mental health diagnosis. And that's because, as you probably know, some people you know, burn bridges and um, maybe move around more frequently. It's harder to keep a relationship going. And so... 
just know that we are experienced in working with people with disabilities and I make sure that my staff has training so that they can you know, work with anybody. <laughs> awesome, great. Um, I still don't see any questions in, I guess, again, people are, are taking in all the information, but I just wanna, again, thank you so much, Tia, for this information. Um, and again, I will make sure to send some more of this out in our, our newsletter, um, but we really appreciate you taking your time to share this information and uh, trying to condense it down because I know it was a lot of information to fit in an hour. So thank you again. Um, just a quick reminder to everyone watching, as I mentioned at the beginning, if you didn't hear um, holiday hours, we will be, our office will be closed next Thursday and Friday for Thanksgiving. And our connection support group that meets on Thursdays will not be happening next Thursday. Um, please check our calendar on our website for the most updated schedule and wishing you all a great rest of your evening and a rest of your week. Thank you so much, Megan, for the invitation. Thank you.